following is a conversation with Sean Lazzarini, a recently turned professional boxer with an incredible track record and success in the amateur boxing domain. Most recently, Sean won the Commonwealth Games gold medal representing Scotland. This is Inside Matters. My name is Dr. James McElroy. I hope you enjoy it. We met in the Western Baths. Aye. Uh, we might have both been in the plunge pool together. Uh, and I was like, this guy's staying in for quite a long time. Aye. Uh, I got some competition here. Uh, it, was a, it was a Tyson Fury moment. <laughs> I'm getting out after him. I didn't know who you were. Uh, Do you know what I mean? I thought you must have done something because you're in really serious shape. Uh, but I have this thing where I don't like getting out before other people. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Even if I've been in there in a long time and I'm like, oh, proper, proper shivering. So... How long have you been going to the Western Bass for? A good few years. It's um, such a, it's obviously, you, you know yourself, it's just a good place for uh, for training, for relaxing, especially if you're an athlete, even though like there might not be all athletes there, but it's um, a good place to look after your body and your mind as well. Um, it's like quite a private place. So right. people aren't like just, you, you can go there and you can just focus on your own training. Sometimes I use treadmills all the time in the gym. I get my runs done, then I get my sauna done, I just relax, no one bothers me, I just focus. Yeah. It's just time to yourself and I, I go almost every day, to yeah, be honest. that was going to be my question. You, I, almost every day, like probably six days a week, I'm there. And um, I think it's such an po- important part of not only my training, but part of my lifestyle as well and my life, do you know what I mean? For mental health as well, do you know what I mean? It just keeps me uh, in a good place, do you know what I mean? I do, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I see you there. Yeah. Pretty much every day. <laughs> I've got no life. Slightly different times though. So do you think that this, is it the sauna, the cold mm-hmm. or both? That like gives you, yeah. 100% both. Um, uh, I feel like the sauna just, because uh, we put our bodies through so much in the training, in my job pretty much, you know what I mean? And training three times a day, you need to also kind of pamper it as well sometimes. Right. Uh, give it that nice warm uh, heat on the bones, on the muscles, stretch it out, and then jump in the cold plunge, get that recovery, yeah. and uh, just look after yourself. And yeah. I think it makes a world, a world of difference, 100%. So you're a pro athlete now, Aye. but you've not always been a pro athlete. No. So take me right back to the very start. When I started boxing. How did you get started in the boxing? When I was 12 years old. Uh, I used to play football, played rugby. I was always an athlete in a way, do you know what I mean? I knew I was always going to be an athlete. Before then, it was I was going to be a rugby player. First of all, I wanted to be a football player, then I wanted to be a rugby player. <laughs> and uh, I played rugby until I was about maybe 16, 17. And okay. I started boxing when I was 12, but I remember uh, you have to eventually choose one to right. focus. You can't, you be both. Well, there's some people like Sonny Bill Williams, they become both, don't they? Right. But, um, Eventually, I feel like you have to choose one and focus on that if you're going to take it serious. And I remember, I remember, I remember actually being on the phone to my rugby coach crying. I, I told him that I, I'm going to quit rugby and stuff. But I remember actually crying. I couldn't believe it in it. But sports has been such a big part of my life, literally since I was. I remember six years old. I stopped playing tig in primary school. I stopped playing tig and I started playing football every lunchtime. Right. And that's where like my sports journey began. And then, so twelve years old, started boxing because I started watching the Rocky movies. <laughs> and that's not really? even a joke. I started watching the Rocky movies, and, then, <laughs> and I was like, oh "My God, that's that's what I need to do." I just like, uh, and I always kind of loved like fighting kind of stuff. I always was like kind of uh, like rough as, as a wee boy. Do you know what I mean? I was always like doing wrestling and fighting people. Blah blah. blah. I loved all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? I like uh, I felt like I was wanted to be like action man or something. So started <laughs> boxing, watched the Rocky movies, and that. My dad didn't want me to do it at the time. But yeah. it's funny now because uh, my dad and mum never wanted me to do it, especially my dad at the time. And now my dad's like my guy who's like pushing me the most to do it. Do you know what I mean? Even like when I was young, he was like the one who was pushing me. At times when I was like 16, 15, when I quit boxing for a good few years, he was the one who was gutted that I quit and then pushing me to go back and motivate me to go back. Because it's not really a sport that many parents or any parents... No. My mum's never watched me box, ever. My yeah. mum could never watch me box. My mum tells me to quit every day. 
<laughs> Literally, it's even so. I believe it. I believe but, it. But um, it's not because they don't want you to do well. Obviously, your mum wants you. What's the best for you? Your mum's mom a wee boy. Uh, of course. Your mom's no matter how much, uh, how how big I get, or how tough I am, or how strong I am, I'm still my mum's son, and she just wants me to be safe and yeah, all that stuff. But yeah. So how do you box at twelve? Is that even aye. allowed or? Aye. Uh, I it was funny. Right? I've, I've even got a photo of it. Uh, my I had my first fight when I was twelve. I was forty five kilo, and I had these big was these shots. Here right? in Scotland, uh, in Scotland, yeah. Glasgow. It was on the the Billy, uh, the former coach of Billy Houston Amateur Boxing Club, Billy Ward. I never met him, but apparently he was a he was like a legend, didn't he? And it was his memorial show, and I had these shorts. I had football boots on in the fight, right? Football boots, and I had <laughs> football boots, football boots, and not with not, not, not with studs <laughs> like Asher <Astrotuff> Tough <laughs> or uh, whatever. <laughs> And yeah. I had these big, massive blue shorts on with this red T-shirt, and it said Russia on it. <laughs> a Russian, I don't know why, or CCCP, I think it even said on it. Really? I, really? I swear to God, right? I don't know why. And uh, <laughs> I had, that was my first ever kind of like fight or whatever when I was twelve years old, and that's where it began. So I was forty-five kilo. And what happened in that fight? Yeah, I won. Yeah, I was. I, I won. Smashed, like, smashed them. Yeah, yeah, I was even at that age. I mean, I was like still quite a strong wee kid in it. So. It was like just always like my thing, I suppose, when I was even since I was young. And that stimulated this love for the sport? I think uh what stimulated it was uh the was it winning? Winning, yeah. Winning. I was so I I've always been extremely competitive, you know what I mean? And um back then, especially when I was a wee boy, if I had lost anything I'd be just crying. Yep. And um so winning, especially in boxing, there's a difference between when you go from team sports to individual sports, because it's all on you. It's yeah. not like a team effort. It's just literally you. If you lose, it's because you you got beat. If you win, it's just all because of you. And I kind of like that. I liked all that uh, the glory. I liked I was I liked having the glory to myself. Do you know what I mean, selfish in a way, I suppose. But it's like it's. Uh, it's good fun. Ultra competitive. Yeah, yeah. Are you more 100%. competitive now? Is it just grown and grown? Um, your hunger I, to win? See, when it comes to a fight, something like that, it's just, I've just got an absolute desire to win. I'd literally die before I quit, do you know what I mean? And that's not even a joke. I'd literally, uh, I wouldn't even think about that. I wouldn't even, I would never, quitting would never like, think come in my mind, do you know what I mean? I would just, I would die before I give up. And I think you need to have that. I think most boxers do ha have that. That's why we need people that protect us, a good coach to know when to pull you out in these hard fights. I can kind of relate. I mean, obviously I'm not an athlete, but I, I remember, I know what it's like to have a burning desire, uh -huh. right? And when I would kind of just got started with the company, I was trying to do my final medical school exams uh -huh. at the same time. And uh, I can remember, remember um, I was just, totally wired and my mum was like I'm really worried about you Aye. and I remember saying I don't know if I said it to her face but I remember saying I'd rather die than not smash Aye. these exams and get this company up and running I just yeah. poof, straight out the door uh -huh. I just gotta do it do you know uh -huh. what I mean even if I push myself to the absolute limit I just Aye. have to do this because I've just got that un like controllable desire uh -huh. to make it happen so it sounds like you've got that energy but you've channeled it poof, into see, the sport see the thing <clears> is though I never had that in, in school though I never, like, that was in uni, yeah. I never, I never had that for the education kind of things. I couldn't even sit in a classroom. I just couldn't sit still, could I? And uh, right, but I feel like if I went to school now, it'd be different. But see, back then, like I was just like just, just, just can't focus in a classroom environment. And uh, but I never had that. I, so I never had the competitive side in these kind of things. Yeah. I had it in like sport. I had it in games. I had it in like things like that. Do you right. know what I mean? I don't, and I don't know why. I don't know what makes you, what wires you to be driven like that and these kind of different things. It's fascinating. I don't know either. I wasn't that competitive. Actually, I'll take that back. I think the only reason I did well in school was because I didn't like other people getting better results than me. Aye. That's one bucket. And the other bucket was if I had an amazing teacher Aye. who was super enthusiastic and got Aye. me excited about the subject, then I was like all in. Uh -huh. I remember geography for a while was like my thing. Uh -huh. I want to know all about that longshore drift. I uh -huh. want to know all about how beaches form and all that kind of stuff. Because that teacher was so enthusiastic. Uh -huh. um, but my desire and focus has only gone up as I've got older. Uh -huh. I've got more and more driven, bigger vision, bigger vision, but not less so on the sport side of things. Although yeah. that's just rekindled itself over the last couple uh -huh. of years. 
So you were, we've gone like a bit off piece. You were 12, you won. Uh-huh. And then what happened? Then uh, I just, I just kept winning fights. I just, obviously just three years, obviously there were some losses, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I just, when I got to maybe like 15, I think I won the British Championships or 14, I think it was, I can't remember. But uh, obviously I started realising I had like a big talent for boxing. And because you kept winning, yeah, I kept winning. I was like, you can always tell, like, at these ages, who, who's got talent uh, for boxing. But the truth is, though, it's not always the talented ones that make it. it. It might even be that it's the talented ones, the very talented ones, when you're young, don't never make it almost because they've just got it and they don't need to work that, that hard at that age. Yeah. But when you get older, you have to work hard because people get stronger and people get better. But that guy who's always just kind of, he was quite a little, quite talented, but a hard worker. He's the one who's going to keep getting better and better and better, yeah. especially when you get older. So at that age, uh, especially if you're an amateur boxer, it's about learning, it's about learning, it's about just keep learning your craft, keep uh, progressing and keep working hard. But when you get to 16 and 15, as you know, do you know what I mean? Like that's when people, especially in Glasgow, I feel like just they, they find alcohol they find party and they yeah. find and a lot of people drugs, drugs yep. and people a lot of people don't make it through that for if they want to become a sportsman and it's uh the thing is though well, being an athlete isn't for everyone it's uh, a hard thing to do do you know what i mean in, in any sport to to dedicate your life you can't go drinking all the time you can't party all the time you can have some you can do it sometimes but you need to look after your body and a lot of people uh what I just have like a kind of normal life and go out the weekends and have a laugh and have a few drinks, blah, 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 which is nothing wrong with. But if you want to be a top athlete, especially in a sport like boxing, then you need to make sacrifices. But the way I, the thing for me is, I don't really see it as a sacrifice because it's what I want to do and it's what I enjoy doing. I don't really, uh, back then though, I did quit boxing for two years though, almost. Yeah, you said that. So um, when was that? When I was about 16, I think it was, or 15, because like, I just- Distractions. Just once that you get that age in it, you you start seeing uh, girls, parties and alcohol yeah. and stuff. And then uh, it's funny again, because I remember, I think I must have started back again when I was about 17. And I was just thinking like, I had such a good opportunity to like, maybe do something extraordinary in my life, like become like a, professional athlete or something and like potentially like a world champion or something like that and i always seen that for myself i mean that's a vision i always had for myself like being something like a crazy amazing athlete yeah. and then i kind of was like oh my god i've completely ruined it <laughs> and then i started boxing again and uh, it wasn't too late do you know what i mean so so for those two years you just weren't boxing were you training at well, all boxing no and I was uh, living doing, the Glasgow uh, lifestyle. Yeah, just uh, it was in a way. I suppose it was good because I got maybe, it out your system. Maybe you get some stuff out your system yeah. and that. But at the yeah. same time as well, um, I was still like playing. I was still playing rugby and football a wee bit, and uh, uh, but at the same time as well, with alcohol and stuff and all that kind of lifestyle, it just brings trouble. It doesn't really bring anything good to your life. It doesn't bring any value, and you just become like you don't want to be like everyone else. Right. You want to be, you want to have um, purpose. You want to have something that you're driving for. You need to have some goal, some target. And then, I, then again, I was young, right? So I'm not going to be like pure hard on myself. Like I didn't have any visions and targets and stuff. But then we went back to it, and it worked out. So it was okay. Sounds like it's worked out for you, man. I mean, we're going to get uh, to where you're at now, and and you're really uh-huh. it seems like you're on a crazy upwards growth uh-huh. trajectory, which is just amazing. Yeah. Even since I've known you. You've done some unbelievable things, yeah. right? We'll, we'll get to that when I keep the audience listening. So <clears throat> you're right, 18, it's a lot going on. Uh-huh. You're allowed to drink legally. Mm-hmm. Everyone's partying. Some people yeah. are going to uni. But you went there in a different path. You uh-huh. started to focus on trying to make it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously I left school when I was 17. And then, uh, But I was in a Scotland team, though. So I, I, from, I, won the youth, I actually won the Youth Commonwealth Games. Did you? Uh, in Samoa. I actually won it. And uh, in Samoa, you know Samoa? Oh, yeah. An island beside the... Uh, There's some big boys there. Big Samoans, yeah. <laughs> big beasts. <laughs> big units, yeah. But I was actually... Do like, they box? Yeah, there's some good Samoan boxers, to be honest. Yeah. But a lot of them box out of, like, New Zealand and that. And, um, yeah. It must be so, like, but dense I, musculature and bone structure. Uh, and... 
But um, so yeah, for, I I won that the Commonwealth Games there, but that was a lot easier though. But um, and but I always I've always worked though. I've always had a job and stuff. And I and I went to college when I was eighteen when I came back from that, and I started doing. I done fitness and sport, and then I done, and then I left that, and I done business. I, I lasted three weeks in college, but like the thing is, <laughs> what, what do you mean you lasted three weeks? What because happened? it just uh, it wasn't for you. It just wasn't for me. Do you know what I mean? Like because I, I feel like I generally can't thrive in that kind of environment. Like I, just, I, I, I struggle to sit and just listen to a teacher talk about like accountancy because I was studying, I done business or something for like a few weeks. Yeah, business management, and obviously like. I would like to have my own business and stuff one day. Even, in a way, I kind of do just now. Do you know what I mean? You do, yeah. But um, I would. You want to build the empire? Yeah, but like back then, it's just see sitting in a classroom for me. Right. How, how can I sit in a classroom and I've I got like my pals and that like beside me and that like <laughs> laughing and stuff? Like, I just can't focus. I know it's like a bad attitude to have, but uh, so I left that and I started. I had like various jobs and stuff. Like for a few years, I started working as a. I've worked in restaurants, bars, alongside trying to like fund my boxing career and then I started uh, working as a personal trainer at Boxers Booth and uh, that's been a great journey as well for me do you know what I mean just uh, that's the one that I've been to yeah you've been to there yeah, yeah. so um, you know it's a nice wee gym in, in the Govan uh, with Essen and Oz and they've done good really atmosphere brilliant atmosphere absolutely brilliant do you know what I mean uh, everyone's really friendly the gym's a wee private gym it's got so much, uh, just everything you need in a gym, really, to be honest. And it's like, it's, it's been good for me because I've been able to kind of like fund my boxing career from that. And even still, I'm still doing that just there. And uh, personal training, to be honest, even no matter how well I do in my boxing career, like, I'd always still like to keep that. Enjoy like, it. Yeah, I genuinely enjoy it. You're a good coach. You're like, let's go, champ. Let's go, let's go champ. Recap. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really and love I'm it. Like, I can't do any more, man. Let's go, champ. <laughs> it's really fun to be honest. And you, I've met so many, even like so many clients that have just, have just have ended up just becoming my pals. Yeah, and stuff. So it's really good. How do people fund their boxing career usually? Is it through sponsorship? Or? A lot of people get sponsors and stuff, and uh, a lot of people get maybe. Do have like family and that supporting them, right? Uh, financially and stuff. Until you become pro, and then you've still. But got even as a pro, do you know what I mean, like you're not going to be rich at the start. You're not going to make big money at the start. It's only the in boxing, like people don't get this idea. It's like you're pro, you made it. I, no, that's not start, that at all. Right? Yeah, it's not that at all. It's hard. Mm. When you become a pro boxer, you're not going to be making millions at all at the start. It's a pure graft, right? It's better, and that's that's for like all fighters. Right. Boxing is potentially even like the best out of them all. See the MMA fighters and that as well. And the ones even in the UFC, they struggle. They struggle so much because they don't get like that much money. People think they get so much money, but it's not true at all, right? And then like 10% goes to the trainer, 25% goes to the manager. And then... Uh, and then... Uh, 25% to the manager, yeah, 10 to the trainer, okay, 35%. And then, then, then tax, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like... And then you have to pay for everything yourself. Like you're going to pay for your physio, you're going to pay for the SNC coach, you're going to pay for, you need to pay like a lot of things. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, a lot. It's a hard life. That's why you need sponsors and stuff. That's why you need uh, some more support like that. There's a lot there. Tell me about the transition then from when you were before pro to uh, now and you're professional now, uh, right? When did you go pro? Uh, uh, recently, like just, uh, um, just at the very end of last year. Yeah. I uh, signed with uh, Ian Wilson. He's my manager. I remember I saw you. You yeah. weren't pro, and then the next time I saw you, you were pro. I uh -huh. was like, "Well done, bro." Yeah, yeah, it's good. Next chapter. Uh huh. Next chapter. Next chapter. So, but I don't even see it as like a next chapter really, because um, I'm still gonna be doing like what I do. But it's just you're not wearing a vest anymore, and you're not wearing a headgear anymore. But you never, you never wear headgear anyway. You don't wear headgear. Uh huh. No. So what's the headgear all about then? Uh, headgear. You wear it when you're a youth under eighteen. Is that right? Aye. Huh. Nah. I thought it was for all amateur boxers. No. 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 You, don't, you, you only wear that when you Does it there. even help? Well, I think that's why they... Because they used to wear the headguard, didn't they? But then they took it away because they've done studies. Like, apparently it doesn't really help. doesn't help for concussion at all. No. Yeah. Yeah, and the gloves I heard... I even, I even think that it poten potentially it causes more concussions because, for example, when you're... When you've got a headguard on... It doesn't stop your brain from getting rattled about. Exactly. But like basically it just makes your head bigger 
and you're going to take more punches. More you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But when you've got no head guard, the punches kind of glide off a wee bit. Oh, interesting. In a way, so it's like, but fascinating. Yeah, I think it stops you from getting cuts and all that stuff a wee bit. But yeah, interesting. And the gloves are ma mainly to protect your hands, right? I heard that as well. Uh, nah, I wouldn't say so. No, they protect nah. your face and bones and other things like that as well. Yeah. Especially in amateur as well. So that's one thing as well. In amateur, uh, the, the gloves are kind of, they feel more cushiony, more padded a wee bit. Oh. And professional, they're solid. Oh, damn, man. Aye. So have you had a professional fight yet? Not yet. When is it? Hopefully soon. As soon as possible. I'll, I'll let you all know. Let me know, man. I need Aye. to go. You'll be there. I'll be there for team, team Sean. Okay, so tell me about your typical training day now. Uh -huh. And tell me how about how your training's evolved over time. You uh -huh. said three times a day. I didn't realise it was that much. Yeah. So, that's a big commitment so three times a day twice a week it'll be, it'll, I'll do three sessions a day twice a week and for, for the, the other so basically that's how it is I'll do six training sessions a week yep and four out of the six will be two sessions a day and then other two will be three I see what you're saying okay yeah. so that's a lot of work on Monday we start we start off with a run then boxing and then on the Tuesdays and Thursdays a weight session will be added in the Yep. So I do weights twice a week and then I'll be like, is it maybe run six or five times a week? Have boxers always done weights or is that quite a new thing? <coughs> well, old school coaches and like even when I was growing up as a wee boy, they, they never told you to do weights. But um, when people think of weights, they think more of like bodybuilding okay. kind of weights, weight, weight, weight training like for hypertrophy. But yep. uh, that probably wouldn't, that's not good, really good for boxing, but you need to you need to make your training specific for your sport and what you're going to do right and uh, the weight training i do is more explosive yep it's more about uh performance based it's about injury prevention um uh, so that's what uh, my weight training is all based on and your coach puts all of that together and you just follow the program or do you yeah. program a little bit yourself too? sometimes i add more me bits as well things that i'd like to kind of maybe work on as well because uh, I'm quite experienced with weights and stuff as well yeah. and uh, uh, but yeah usually I've got a coach that will like make my plan and I just follow it to be honest. And how's the training and the work increased or decreased over the years like are you doing more work now than ever before? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I train with Ricky Burns now as well. You know, Ricky Burns is a three-time world champion. Yeah I know the name. And uh, he was a brilliant boxer. I used to see him growing up uh, when I was a wee boy as well. He was uh, a big motivation for young Scottish boxers uh, because he was just like a normal guy from Coat Bridge and just uh, done absolutely brilliant and just the way this guy works even now he's like retired he's just really? just mental just he's just constantly training it's, uh, and he's just like he's just an absolute machine I actually sparred him once right and he's a lightweight as well yeah. and I was thinking obviously for the listener what's your weight? I'm a light heavyweight. Right, so you're and above. I, aye, so I'm like a lot heavier than this guy, right? And then yeah. I just remember sparring him. And he's not actually known as to be like a knockout artist or anything. I remember him punching me. I was like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> I swear, he's absolutely <laughs> so, I couldn't believe it in it. I was like, what the hell? Surely he kills everyone that has like his size in it. It's like- He was hitting hard. Oh, he's an absolute machine. And like that's something I try to take from him, just that absolute work ethic. Yeah. He's like a kind of- Scottish David Goggins in a way he just does like really I swear he does like just crazy even he's retired now he just does like crazy running sessions and crazy weight sessions and crazy boxing sessions it's just non-stop so I'm sure that's what I want to add to my how often are you training with Ricky probably about uh supposed to be about maybe five times a week five oh, times a week okay so you're training he with... put he tells me what exactly what I need to do so the reason is because uh I started training with Ricky. I had my my coach growing up, uh, well, recent in recent years was uh, Jim McCosh, and Jim was a brilliant coach. Jim done so much for me over the years, even up until this day, and he's always going to be part of my uh, team in life or whatever. But uh, he's he's got his own job and everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just needed someone who's more full time. Yep. Uh, to just be there. And a former champion. Do you know what I mean? Of course, he's got all that experience, Ricky. I'm still learning myself. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? I do. And I, and I want someone who's I want I'd, I'd like to have someone who's like who had that experience and knew what it takes to be a world champion. And basically, what uh, what does it take to be a champion? 
I think it's less, I think it's literally just uh, your mindset and just yeah. You need to just be comfortable putting yourself in uncomfortable situations every day. Do you know what I mean, just putting yourself through absolute pain all the time, and that, that's what it, that's generally what I think it is, right? And if you have that mindset where you're not scared of anyone and you're not scared of putting yourself out there and like saying that you're you're going to be like the best, and then just going out there and backing your words up, then you're going to be a champion, I think. And that's what I'm going to do. But you uh, are a champion. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about the recent the recent victory because that was a big one for you, wasn't it? Uh-huh. The Commonwealth. The Commonwealth Games, yeah. So basically I just said I was going to go pro. My original plan was to go to Olympics. I was in, I was in Team GB for about uh, three years almost, I think, yeah. Yep. Team GB was good because you were getting paid every month and, and then uh, you, you were comfortable, do you know what I mean? It was like you were a professional athlete then. You're getting paid every month, a decent salary. You get, uh, and I was working as well. I was in a good situation, so, and you, and basically, yeah, so I wanted to go to the Olympics, and uh, at 75 kilo, and but, but I ended up getting this hand injury, I broke my hand, and uh, I Belarus. can still see there's something there, yeah, and uh, and basically, it was in Belarus, and I, I, I won this fight, and my hand was just absolutely massive, and then had to, I took so much time out to let it recover, and it just, and it got injured again, and it got injured again. So basically I had wow. to get an operation to fix it properly. I wouldn't have had to get an operation if I wasn't going to be a boxer, but because I'm going to be punching people all the time with it, then I had to get this fixed. And that took me out for a long time. So basically... How, and that, did, how did you find that? Mentally? Mentally, it was meant, it was horrible because uh, I couldn't train for two months at all oh. because I had to get bone taken from the hip, bone graft, wow. put into the hand. So that's, I why, that's why it looks so... Uh huh. Solid. So I couldn't run, or and I couldn't uh, do any kind of boxing training or anything. I was literally going mental. That must have been so hard for you. Aye, that was the first time in my life I couldn't do anything. I was literally, I felt like I was going insane. But and that was during like COVID and all that stuff. So that kind of that ruined my chances to go to the Olympics. And uh, can you go now, or can you not go if you're pro? Nah, isn't I'm, I'm turning professional now. So uh, the way it works, you have to be like an amateur on the team GB. Uh, to to go, go Olympics, I think now though they do, they do they do some pros can go, uh, can go to the Olympics I mean, now. Would Canelo not just go and clean up? That's what I think. I've always thought that, but like I think you have to have under like six fights or something like that, or ten fights That's or something. So weird. Ah, it's so weird. Because think- basketball people get the pros Aye. in, and you've got Team America with like LeBron and, and uh-huh. all those people. That's I know. strange, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's mental. So the, le- the the difference in quality. Uh, between pro and amateur in boxing is it is it huge or are there are some like sick amateurs who just want to be in like the Olympics the whole time or so the <clears throat> the truth is right a top level amateur will beat most professionals really yeah because it's not amateur it's not amateur boxing they're professionals right because but the the it's, it's, it should be called like Olympic style boxing. Like it's a different style of boxing. It's it's not amateur because they get, these guys all get paid and all that stuff. And it's it's under like a, it's called AIBA. That's the organization. Rather but it's than obviously the WBO. rather than just uh, boxing as what boxing. everyone knows it as like twelve rounds to become like a world champion or whatever. But the, obviously these guys are three rounds. But the difference is uh, a pro a pro a professional boxer will be conditioned for twelve, and, and his his tactics will be for twelve rounds. So an amateur boxing match is fast, faster pace, as much faster pace. You just go in. Yeah, say ba ba bam ba bam, and then a pro will even maybe sacrifice like the first four rounds and just get warmed up, then start coming into it. Four but rounds, maybe like depending on the tactics. Well, yeah, yeah, he could. But see, an, an amateur boxing night, if if you lose the first round, then you need to win the second round, pretty much. Right. Only then, or then you've lost the, the fight. Can you knock somebody out? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Because I did see you absolutely leather someone Aye. in the Commonwealth, and it looked like they were like. Aye, I stopped them. Yeah. I stopped. I stopped my first guy in the Commonwealth Games, but it's uh, it is probably it's less likely to happen in the pros. Sorry, in the amateurs because uh, everyone's always kind of equally matched. I say Italian. Huh? I say Italian. Hey, hey. <laughs> everyone's always equally matched in the amateurs. Do you know what I mean? Right. So you're not in, in the pros. You people will fight like the first ten fights sometimes like against people that have had like a hundred losses and like two wins 
it's quite mental is there people like that aye 100 losses 2 wins they're called uh, journeymen and basically what these guys do is like they just they just go around they might fight every week and basically all they're trying to do is not get knocked out so they can get paid every week because if you get knocked out then you're not allowed to fight for like two months or something like that my gosh it's quite mental when you that think about it that is wild I know but so when you see people so with, they're professional losers exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean it in like they're like a loser like I. I mean, like they're hundred percent, yeah, right, but they're losing their fights, yeah. Professional, I whatever you want to call it, but it's like, it's um, it's crazy, isn't it? So when you look at someone's record, sometimes and they're like twenty and all, you need to look at who they fought, because sometimes you look at the record and it's just completely padded, just fighting guys that are like, like do you know what I mean, they're there to lose, yeah. And it's quite, it's quite a weird thing That's about boxing. It's quite, a, and I, and I think it all started because of like people like Mayweather and they want to be like undefeated and blah 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 but Mayweather fought proper like Mayweather yeah he did yeah but, but was he tactical about it he was tactical yeah 100% like so he never fought Pacquiao and all these kind of guys on like in their primes he he was smart about it do you know what I mean so he would wait for the right moment but yeah. boxing is all about timing it's about like uh, the right time to fight someone you need to, you, you, I might not be ready to fight someone like like a world champion just now, but like you need Canelo. to wait. Like Canelo, it's right? coming though, isn't it? Hundred percent, right? <laughs> we need to wait until the time's right. You need to wait until you're completely ready. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I think a sport, a sport is all about that. It's about timing, but uh, I feel like it kind of ruins it sometimes because, for example, in like the UFC, the UFC is run by just Dana White, uh, just one guy, one promoter, and he decides who fights who all the time to make the fights interesting. Yeah, yeah. and and that's that's good that way. And you shouldn't be. Sometimes people are too scared to lose, too scared to take the risk. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of. Uh, how have your losses been for you mentally? Yeah, losses are hard, hard, hard to take, aren't they? But uh, you need to just uh, come back from them. You need to just come back uh, stronger. You need to think like, what did I do wrong? Especially in boxing and these kind of sports. I mean, like, because it's pride as well. A lot of it's pride. Yeah. No one likes to lose. It's hard to take, so you just need to think like how you can come back stronger. What 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 can you learn from that? But losing is not something that comes into my mind anymore. Do you know what I mean? No. Like you just need to. You can't think about losing at all. You just think about winning, and that's it. So the night before the fight, what are you thinking about? What's your ritual? Ritual. I don't have rituals. I, I think rituals just uh, make you. Uh, I feel like rituals can uh, make you weak-minded in a way weak-minded a wee bit because if you don't get your ritual right then you're screwed or, I, I don't yeah. need I don't need to touch my toes five times or like I don't know eat the same thing every day I, all I need is the opponent in the ring and and they're getting smashed ah exactly and they're getting dude <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I don't need anything else and that, I, that that's it I'll just jump in the ring doesn't matter what colour I'm wearing doesn't matter what shoes I've got on doesn't matter what boxer shorts I've got on I might go commando as well <laughs> and still batter them do you know what I mean so it's like I don't believe in any of these superstitions yeah. You just go into win and, and that's it. Yeah. I saw a video of you uh, it was really funny. It was like I can't I'm gonna get this wrong, but it was like yeah, he's getting smashed. Montenegro's getting smashed, uh, he's getting smashed. <laughs> he's getting it. Yeah, getting they're all it. getting it. They're all uh, getting it. But that I liked it because it was an insight into your mind. Aye. Uh, they're all getting it. Uh, everyone's getting it. If everyone's getting they're it. They're all getting it. Still. <laughs> Canelo's getting it, getting it. <laughs> but, um, but that's the mindset you aye. need right 100%, 100% everybody's getting smashed aye. and you're training to be the guy that delivers yeah. and all of that right I like uh, one of my role models not role models but yeah his role model I suppose is that do you know do you, do you follow the UFC at all yeah a little you bit that guy comes at Shemaev yeah and he goes I'm coming for everybody yeah. kill everybody yeah. ah, that, that's the mindset that's, yeah. that's like that's what you need to be like man yep I feel like I want, I'm trying to be the Scottish boxing version of him. <laughs> Love that. Because like, just like, I remember the first time I seen him, I was like, oh, man, that's that's how you need to be. That's yep. the mindset you need to have. Apparently when he spars as well, uh -huh. he hits hard. Uh, he hits really, really hard. Like everyone's uh, getting destroyed. Just, it doesn't matter what the uh, setting is, everyone's uh, getting destroyed. I'll send you the thing. It was uh, um, another pro. Sean Strickland, wasn't it? Maybe, yeah. It he, was, yeah. He was like, yeah, this guy's just... He's just destroying everyone all the time. Uh, he, had no, to, like, he had to tell him to calm down yeah, on them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, something. Because like, when you're sparring, you're not supposed to. Uh, 
Yeah. But see the thing is, uh, well, like my mum listens to this, by the way, so we can't tell her about you getting me into the sparring. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> no, I know about or, or, or your plans to get me into the uh, Scottish Championships. Don't worry, I'm not. I can't do that. You will. I can't. I can't. No, I can't, I can't turn Come up. On. I can't turn up to work with a black eye or a bloody nose. And uh, I, I, I also don't. I feel like I feel like I have a. Spe- this is going to sound really big-headed. I feel like I've got a special brain. I need protect to. Pre- I need to protect my brain. No, hundred percent. I get you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I need. We'll do more head movement then. We- <laughs> <laughs> or you'll go like. So can we go back to the night before a fight? Because this is I've obviously never done this, but I'm sure many people have imagined what it's like the night before a uh. fight. What do you think about? Do you think about your opponent? Uh. Do you think about walking into the ring and just uh-huh. doing them? Think about winning and your hand being raised. Yeah, yeah? you, you visualize it. I suppose I do, right? But um, see, the more the older I've got, I don't really ever. I don't feel like I see. For, for example, right back in the day when you're younger and maybe less experienced, you have you get. I feel like you get more nervous and you think about it too much. Yeah. When I'm like maybe in my room the night before, I'm not really trying to think about it. I'm just chilling. Are you playing the FIFA? Really? Maybe just chilling out, relaxing. Just uh, uh, but then again, I'll be making weight, won't I? So like, um, you're always dying for a drink. Your mouth's so dry. So tell me about that then. What 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 uh-huh. what happens with making weight? Like, what's the what's the objective? Like, what's the process? Yeah. So basically, obviously, you need to diet like a good few weeks before. Make sure your weight's under control. You don't want to cut too much water because obviously we usually lose a few kilos of water before so, it. So the thinking for the listener is, you want to be as big and strong as you can. Uh huh. You're likely going to be overweight, mm-hmm. and then you want to get underweight and then rebound. Is that is that essentially it? Yeah, but the thing is though, in the the amateur or the Olympic style boxing, you could be boxing five times within like five days. So you got to make weight every day. And the pros in boxing and like things like UFC and stuff, you see them doing these crazy weight cuts. Yeah, you can't afford to do it. For example, in the Commonwealth Games, I had like four or five fights. Right, so I need to make weight. Uh, in five consecutive days so you can't afford to lose too much weight every night okay but if you're doing you're it one, if you're doing day. it one fight yeah and you can and you're getting weighed in the day before so remember as well we're getting weighed in on the morning of the fight so we wake up in the morning get weighed and then we fight later on that day maybe like f- five hours later so with these ufc guys and there's world boxing world champions they have 24 hours to rehydrate so they they can do it more extreme and uh, there's re- some crazy videos, isn't there? Yeah, a lot. Some people do it too much, though, and some people can. Uh, it can make you really weak. Yeah. So there's a there's a fine line that you need to perfect. You need to know your own body. You need to know what your body's capable of. And I suppose as a pro, I'm going to start uh, discovering that more about myself, and I'm going to have to learn more about it. That's why I've got guys like Ricky Burns on board because he knows yeah. all about that. And I, like I said, I'm still learning about this kind of thing. What happens if you need to make weight and you've not cut enough? You get the bin bags on and... Aye, well, you're going to have to do that regardless. You're going to have to shed a few kilos. That happens. Regardless, yeah. You get a sweatsuit on and... Uh, <laughs> What's it like being in the sweatsuit? It's uh, it's not nice, obviously. It's um, it's just, it's not good. It's like you don't enjoy it. It's it's just something you have to do. Right. But... Uh, do you go in a sauna in the sweatsuit? No, nah, because that sounds next level. No, nah, I don't go in a sauna sweat. So I, I usually just, uh, I try not eat as much that on that day, and I'll drink pretty much next to nothing. And then, uh, obviously, you do a good sweat session. You check the weight. Depends what how your weight is. Depends how well you've done the weight. But um, that's why I had to move up from seventy five kilo because seventy five kilo, I was depleted. Ah, uh, uh-huh. I was always, I was uh, losing like. Maybe three and a half kilos the night before, sometimes, Oof. which is maybe a bit too much. That's a lot. Yeah, and then so in now I'm sitting there like right now I'm I'm going to be I'll be like eighty six kilo, eighty five kilo. So like I'm felt f- came grown a lot more since then. So what will you need to make when you go to your first pro fight in terms of weight? Maybe like seventy nine kilo. Just there's a fair bit there that needs to go. Aye. And how long out from the fight do you think you'll have to be able to make that body composition change? Yeah, I could do that. I, 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 can, I can. All I can do. All I need to do is just uh, watch my meeting. 
because I do love my food maybe too much. Okay, let's talk about food then. We aye. love we love to talk about food on this aye. podcast. Uh -huh. We love it. Let's talk. So do you have like a specific diet <laughs> that you have? No. No. Which I probably should sort it more, but I love it. Uh, Let me tell you, uh -huh. this is unsolicited advice. That could take things to the next level for you. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. If, if that's not dialed in and that could be dialed in, then you've got so much potential. See, the thing is, right, I feel like <clears throat> um, my meals are always good, but I, it's the bits that I add on. For example, like chocolate, biscuits with the coffee, things like that. <laughs> Sugar with the yeah. coffee, yeah. Sugar with the coffee. <laughs> and also as well, it's... Uh, it's just that maybe the quantities you eat. So that when I'm when I'm making weight for a fight, obviously I have to cut a lot of that out. I have to cut the reduce the quantities, and I have to cut out the chocolate, cut out all the crap. That's the hardest part for me. I think to be honest, it's not it's not like it's not not drinking. It's not uh, training. It's like literally like eating healthy. Yeah. That's for me. That's the hardest part. But to be fair, you're training three times a day. Uh huh. You need calories, right? Aye, but you still need to kind of watch what you're eating as well. It's it kind of, uh, you need to keep it clean. Do you get a nutritionist or will you get a nutritionist as part of your, like, you know, your, your package of support? You've got your physio, you've got your S&C, you've got uh -huh. Ricky Burns, you've got da-da. Will you get a nutritionist or is... Maybe I will eventually if, in the future. And you'll need to fund that yourself, won't you? Uh-huh. So you have like a, you're essentially a business uh -huh. when you're a pro, right? Yeah. And then you've got everyone else that you pay to help make you Aye. amazing. And they come with you in your camps and stuff yeah. like that. Have you been to any crazy camps? Well, with the with them, the GB team and the Scotland team, I went. I went uh, so many training camps. Yeah. Uh, Where'd you go? Spain, uh, Kazakhstan, well, uh, Russia. What's Russia like for boxing? Russia's brilliant. Yeah. Serious. Yeah, these guys, all these countries like Russia, Kazakhstan, these Eastern Bloc countries, they're all serious about it. Do you know what I mean? They're all very. Their mentality is really good as well. They just all they do is train. No, it's just all business. So, why is Scotland not better at boxing? I think Scotland, for all sports, right, has like some of the best talent in the world. But because uh, for every sport, like, well, see, the, well, I don't know, see the people I've seen like grown up, right, that could have been like professional rugby players and professional football players and professional boxers. Like they had just so much talent, and then they just start drinking, start going out, start partying. Yeah, it's mental. And like I'm thinking, like see if like alcohol and like drugs didn't exist, exist in Scotland, I think like we'd be literally one of the best countries in the world for sport. Right. It's a shame, but we do have a really <clears throat> bad booze and drugs problem, though. It's we? mental, particularly Glasgow. But hundred percent, Glasgow. Glasgow's really bad for and cocaine one, and booze, uh -huh. isn't it? Yeah, I think Glasgow's like almost like the could be the worst in the world. Yeah, I, and uh, I feel like uh, a lot of people get caught up in this lifestyle now. Yeah, they do from all backgrounds. They do, and if you think about if every weekend from Friday to Sunday you're boozing hard and you're taking lots of class A drugs, you're never going to be fully recovered. No. So how are you ever going to be the best in the world at whatever you're trying to do? It's just uh -huh. not, it's not possible. I also think the weather could be a factor. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But maybe not in Russia. Russia, the weather's, I mean, this huge landmass. I can't just generalize. Uh -huh. But um, I think that if there's better weather, people are more likely to be outside and train and so on yeah. and so on. Um, but uh, what you're saying makes sense. So if you were in charge of everything in the country, what would you do to make us better at boxing? I would just promote, uh, I would, well, in these countries as well, right, these athletes are like, they're protected more. They're given like more funding and stuff. So maybe if you made like the lifestyle for these kind of guys better, like, and give them more support, then it'd be better as well. And also as well, just trying to like educate people on on the fact that like going out and getting pushed every weekend isn't all that, to be honest. Yeah. But at the same time as well, like we spoke about mentality. Yep. It's up to you at the end of the day if you if what if, you're going. If you don't want it, maybe it's just a typical a mindset that we have in Scotland. Like that, I feel like one thing we have in Scotland as well, we don't like our own getting too ahead of ourselves. We don't, do we? No. Nah. We hate it. This we, is what's telling me about the US. Aye. It's like in the U... Sorry, go on. Finish what you're saying and I'll jump in. I'm quite animated because I totally agree with you, but yeah, go on. Basically, if a guy... In, if, I feel like if a guy in Scotland just starts doing something like... Uh, doing something out of the ordinary, like something quite right. big and like maybe putting himself out there quite a lot, right. we we have this kind of attitude of like, who do you think he is? Yeah. Do you think what's he doing? Yeah. Do you think he's bloody... Oh, that, blah, blah, blah. But it's like... That's right. That's why. Why do we not like back each other up? You get what I mean. Why are we not like happy that oh this guy's from Glasgow? He's he's doing good, man. Big him up. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. 
we always kind of, even like our own footballers now, we always kind of take the piss out of them. We always say, oh, Scotland, SFA, Scotland field again, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Scotland's this, Scotland's crap, Scotland's this. Why are we not backing each other up, do you know what I mean? And I feel like I know exactly we should always be doing that. We, we, you get other countries that they are so proud of their their own country when they're backing them up all the time. And like, why, yep. why are we not backing each other up? I totally agree. And with I feel you. like, and after talking about like for music, for everything, for business, for everything, exactly, everything. Yeah. Whereas in, and that's why I was getting animated. Cause I think I told you when I came back from early, uh, yeah, uh, San Francisco, California. Aye. I was just like, the mindset is so different. Uh -huh. It's just totally different. It's like. If you tell someone in Scotland, so if I tell someone in Scotland, right, this is what I want to do. I want to develop a new medicine, create a multi-billion pound company, then I want to be the first minister to go. Aye. Wow. It's either. Who's James think he is? Oh. Aye, they bought a pal. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're like, oh, that guy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got a big head. Whereas in the US, it's like, yes, sir. Yeah. It's like, you do that. Aye. You go and be the biggest and the best and the first. Aye. You, you, you have to do that. Aye. Why would you do anything else? Also, let's say for, I'll give you two examples. So, um, you 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 um you have a great event with your company and you become multimillionaire. You go and buy a fast car, okay? Aye. You, you drive it to work and everyone's like jealous, jealous, and he's a. I won't say it because we can't use bad Aye. words in this podcast, but he's a. Yeah. Whereas in the US, people are like, they're like clapping. They're Aye. like, that's the American dream. Aye. They're like, I, I want to be like you one day, yeah. sir. So yeah. I, we just don't have that supportive success promoting mentality here in yeah, scotland yeah. which is crazy because a lot of the things that we use every day were invented in scotland so what one of the most entrepreneurial inventive societies ever and a lot of people don't see the the hard work for, that oh, you you put behind the scenes you know what i mean man. they don't see don't, that they don't all. they don't see that and then they think oh, who's this guy what's yeah. he doing blah, they don't blah, they, blah. They, they don't see the work. hard your whole life when when you when they were out like drinking stuff you were out grafting in your own craft that's it so it's like, out running in the rain with the music on exactly not always but yeah <laughs> yeah so that's it so tell me about the first fight then as a pro how how will this be arranged and like is, is there is there a person identified like how does it work um i don't i don't actually know too much like I, 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 i'm just gonna get uh the call eventually and uh get told i'm fighting this guy i'll say sound and jump in just and do the business i but it's uh <laughs> obviously I'll be training. I'm, I'm always training. I'm always ready. Mm. Uh, eventually, when I know when I'm fighting, I'll start. Uh, How much notice will you get? Probably about six weeks or something. Mm. Mm. Five weeks. And then I'll just start bringing the weight down a wee bit. And the promoters get together and they say, right, yeah. this could be a good fight. This is how much. How, what about the money side of things? How does that appear? Well, it won't be It won't be that much at the start, probably. Like, people think, oh. It comes from the audience, right? Uh, people pay to be there and yeah. you get a slice of that. And it'll, it'll, I'll, I'll, I think as well, it'll just come from like, because, well, it's different as well. My like promotional deal like isn't like completely like sorted yet. Right. So a, work, a, lot of people when it's, a lot of people when it's on pro, they'll, they'll get like a, uh, they'll just maybe be with a smaller promoter and they'll get, they'll get ticket, a ticket deal, which is like, base, they'll get paid on based on how many tickets they can sell and stuff. Yep. Uh, but you don't usually you don't really want that usually you want something like you want a, a set past a good price eventually but the truth is as well right see people that went to the Commonwealth Games before they're getting same the people that were, got bronze people that I would absolutely batter do you know what I mean people are getting like from England and stuff they get like uh, they're getting better deals than me they're getting signed by Matchroom Eddie Hearn and stuff and I don't know why like I feel like I've never got that recognition still. I feel like I've always had to fight for it and I've always had to try and prove people wrong. And I never get like these good deals from people. I never get big sponsors. I never get uh, these big deals from like, Eddie Hearn. I never had Eddie Hearn like message me and stuff like saying, oh, we want to like, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why, right? I don't know if maybe they don't like me or something. Or maybe is it, I have no idea what it is, but uh, I don't know if I need to keep pr just proving people wrong again. But I don't mind doing that. I'll just keep proving people wrong again and again and again. And then eventually... Uh, hopefully I'll get uh, a good signing and but at the same time as well I don't mind having that dog mentality that underdog mentality right. where I'm just going to have to keep working hard and keep grafting I'm going to keep chasing it and I'm just eventually I'm going to get it do you know what I mean right. 
And when you say get it, what is that? Just becoming like a world, world champion, a proper champion, properly recognised and getting good money and getting finally getting the benefits of what I've worked so hard for. Because I don't feel like I've got that yet. Mm. And I feel like I deserve, what, I, what I've achieved now, I feel like I deserve uh, more than what I'm getting. Right. And uh, maybe it's, uh, I don't know the word, but maybe maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but I feel like I do deserve more. But then I th maybe I've just got to keep proving everyone wrong again. I think so, man. My best friend Ado, he's like uh, my he's like he's like the Arabic version of David Goggins, right? My, one of my best mates, right? He runs fifteen k every day. He every day, every day, right? He's mental, right? And he's like my biggest motivator. He's like my spiritual advisor, right? Have I seen him in the baths? Maybe once. Right? So I, brought, I think I think I brought I, a few I, times, I, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, he's in pure amazing shape, yeah. and he says. There's nothing wrong, so I just need to keep proving people wrong again and again and again. See, six weeks from when I got picked for Commonwealth Games, he would message me every Monday. He would say, six weeks. He would just send me a message on the Monday, six weeks. Next week, Monday, Amazing. five weeks. Amazing. He would just message me that. Amazing. Four weeks, three weeks, Amazing. two weeks. And he came to every fight in it. Put the work in. I, honestly, this guy's mental. And he's just, and if you watch the final, right? He told me, right, like, when, when you, when you, Win the gold medal. We we feel like visualize it right from the whole from the start that when you win the gold medal, you're going to do that because you <laughs> shut them up. The naysayers, the haters, and then I've done that right. Did you do it after? I've yeah. done it, and then you see him like he's getting right. He's crying. He's going like, "Yes, you proved them wrong." He's going yeah, mental in it, and man. people are thinking, "Who's that guy shouting at you?" I was like, oh, that's <laughs> pal. He's picking me up." But he's a funny. It's good. I think everyone needs someone like that in their life. Right, I've got really good pals. To be honest, man, like I've got. Uh, as I got older, do you know what I mean? Like you're not, you're probably the same yourself. Uh, a lot of people uh, that you're friends with when you're growing up, they start cutting off. Hundred percent. And uh, because maybe they don't realize what you're trying to do. Oh man. I think you spoke. You we spoke about this before. They don't. They don't understand yeah. what you're trying to do. Do you know what I mean? So, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's well, like people going back to what we said at the start. No uh, one can understand, and, I, and I'm I'm not sort of saying I believe this, but no one can understand that you'd rather die than lose. Uh -huh. No one can understand that you'd rather like you, you just can't imagine any other outcome than this being successful. Aye. You just can't I just can't imagine it. Aye. I believe I believe in myself and I believe in what we're doing so much that I've never once imagined it not being successful. Uh -huh. Even when we've had a setback, it takes me about a day to recalibrate and then boom I'm shit up again. Yeah. My former boss, like because there's a, when you're running a company, you you do have bosses. Uh -huh. You've got the board of directors that you report to. And you typically have one person, the chairman, who can be a man or woman, um, or a, a they or whatever, and uh, uh, they um, uh, and and they they're your boss, so they're elected by the shareholders. And I remember uh, m one of my old bosses, who I'm trying to get on the podcast, was like, "You're like one of these uh, helium balloons, or one of these things. You just punch you, and then boom, uh -huh. you just." Pew fly back up uh -huh. and I, I think that's the case it takes me about a day and I'm boom I'm right back up um, because I think if you believe in something enough it doesn't really matter what the setback is yeah. you're going to find a way 100%. you're going to get up um, and uh, one of my challenges I guess has been I started the company I didn't have co-founders so in the US typically in the west coast you would have like one to sorry two to three people starting a company co-founder is really important because you can lean on each other and confide in each other right. and troubleshoot. And if you have a, a down and you have a down pretty much every day in a small business, uh -huh. or you've got a fire to put out, not literal fire, metaphorical fire to put out, you, you troubleshoot right. together. I never had that. Um, so I had to develop this sort of resilience within myself. And you don't want to burden your family. Right. You know what I mean? You don't want to call them up every day and go, you won't believe what happened today. And your friends around you don't want to hear it either. Uh -huh. So you just kind of have to get it in your mind and get it set. And what you said about school friends and old friends kind of not getting it is, of course, it's true, man. You know, yeah. you, 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 there's a very small number of people who uh -huh. really want you to do well, yeah, yeah. who truly believe. 100%. You know, and it's just about finding them and staying close to them. I think Aye. that's key. Sounds that you got it. Well, Ado, Ad? My mate, my mate Ado. My Ado. Mate, my mate Sega. I've got, I've got a good, uh, Andrew Brown, you know what I mean? like Marcus. I mean, we've got, we've got Marcus, good, I know, yeah. You know Marcus. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah. Good we've got good friends good that boys, like yeah. uh, you know they genuinely really they want they you want to, to do well, job. Yeah. They want you to do well. Yes. And uh, a lot of people you, you probably notice in it in your own life, like they maybe 
they don't actually they kind of prefer kind of they don't want you to do better than them right but uh it's um and it's just human nature as well so it's good to have these people in your life and uh well, you're on a you're on you're now on escape what i'll call escape velocity you're uh, you're you're just about to lift off hopefully yeah, a couple of professional funny. fights aye. under your belt knockouts and then aye. You're flying aye. what you what i think you're going to find is there's going to be loads more people trying to get on your train uh-huh. because you're on the up does that make sense yeah. all the people that weren't there now or over the last few years are going to jump on you try to get on your train and that's that's you, fine. You know who the real ones are. Yeah, that's what I'm right? saying because your your friends that have been with you over the last few years are the, those are the ones that will carry Aye. you through, man. And 100%. they're not boxers either, right? Nah, they're not boxers. So uh, I met some, but uh, I met some of I met Sega through boxing, but um, they all like they like boxing, yeah, uh, and they just support me because they they like they're into boxing because like I'm into it, uh, and they just. Uh, they came they they came every fight for the Commonwealth Games. Yep. Amazing. And uh they Amazing. It's like it was hard for them to get to it, do you know what I mean? Where it was, was it in, again? It's in Birmingham. Yeah. So it was yeah. a bit of a it's like not easy to get to, yeah. do you know what I mean? They had to go and get tickets and come every day. Yeah. Driving there, do you know what I mean? So That's a big that's a big one. Commitment. And uh I so it's good to have good friends and you need to know who the real ones are in your life that are gonna properly Right. And hopefully as well you can uh help them in their life as well. Do you know what I mean? help their business and help their career and you you all grow together do you know what I mean and yeah, you and when you're older you've all done well in your lives yeah I so love that vision that's nice what about your family I know your mum doesn't she tells you every day to stop I, yeah. I fully believe that I, I fully believe that man yeah I, but you are you close to your family oh very yeah. very close I love uh, I'm only child though yep. so I'm spoiled with love <laughs> uh, but even though I've got a small family, I feel like I'm still a big family guy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I would never have done anything without my family. Right. I literally couldn't have asked for a better mum and dad, and even my stepdad and stepmom. Yeah. My parents aren't together, but thank God they're still they're still kind of like friends, and they still. That's great. It was really really blessed in that sense. Yeah. Uh, I think that strong family. Never, never rich or anything, but like, just I think like I had any. any had so much opportunities i feel like because uh my parents were just always there for me my parents was, would have supported me and like they would have and anything i wanted to do, do you know what i mean and uh i was just really blessed to have them to be honest yeah. amazing can't like uh, you see a lot of boxers in that, the same like, way actually yeah you see a lot of boxers that uh maybe had like no parents growing up and like maybe the, they always say that uh, maybe their mom was a drug addict and they had these hard lives growing yeah. up but uh, that's another reason why Scotland I think has issues it's just uh-huh. because it's like ge- generational Aye. you know that's what mum and dad did this so yeah. I'm going down this path my, my, my mum had a really hard uh, life growing up do you know what I mean so and uh, basically where she came from she, she made such a she, the way like we speak about that the drugs and alcohol and stuff like the, the, the her family comes from like that do you know what I mean and then she's done so well just to be to give me such a good life right. and i feel like that's the one where you can go see if you come from a family like that yeah like with drugs and alcohol abuse yeah. then you can either become that or be the complete opposite of that yeah you can say like you can become a, basically a drug addict or you can literally never touch it right so but uh obviously that's not for everyone but i feel like um that is like a two ways maybe you could go agreed yeah so Tell me about what you're thinking before you, like, are just about to start fighting. Does your heart start going much faster? Do you get I get buzzing, adrenaline I, rush. I, I get excited. I get excited though. I don't get scared. I'm not, I'm, I start like, shouting at the opponent and stuff. Really? I start looking at him and saying, "It's go time, baby!" I start <laughs> shouting. I just, I start. Pure, I just go mental and I start. Have you ever faced somebody where you were like, "Oh goodness, they look savage. They are savage." No. No. Never. No, <laughs> uh, I just uh, there must be some boxers that have a serious reputation for doing damage. Aye, everyone, everyone's got a reputation in it. But then when they jump in the ring, then they're just uh, another guy. So I don't really think of that. I, I wouldn't be scared of anybody. I jump in the ring with them, then we see what they're all about, mm. and then just need to smash them, and that's it. That's a success mentality. I've got this weird mentality now, right? I don't even get like a pure buzz from it now when I win a fight. 
It's weird. Really? I is, it more like, God, right? is it more like relief? No. I just don't really, I, I'm being honest, right? I don't even feel anything. I don't feel emotion or anything. It's oh. kind of weird, right? I don't know if that's like strange, but it's like. It's I, not that strange. I feel like I always just expect to win, in it? And, I, and I'm just. Uh, it's just business. It's just business. Like I got to go and do the job. Wow. I love when I'm in the ring. Yeah. I love like seeing my opponent get hurt. And I, and, and I don't want him to be. <laughs> And it's, I don't want him to be hurt like forever or anything. Like that's not what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. I'm just I love seeing like obviously the nature of boxing. It's fight. It's a fight in it. And uh, there's no way of sugar. At the end of the day, I want like I, I I'll always uh, be past my opponent after. I'll, be, I'll always show sportsmanship. I'm a good sportsman. No matter how much uh, bad, maybe I've chat a lot of crap to him at the start of it. Yeah. I'll be Is that key. part of it? Not part. Of it. It's not, you don't have to be, but it's just kind of I like Did it. You I mean, do you do it? I, <laughs> I like uh, get maybe like so when you become like top 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 pro you're going to be giving it all the lip I mean maybe a wee bit but i have try not to do too much but I'll be cheeky and stuff yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that stuff I like chatting chatting about smack and then back track, jumping out there and backing up get in their head and it's good to get in their head sometimes yeah uh, but I think it's funny as well you've got examples where people like were really wired up before they fought you because you were in their head and they didn't perform as well it's part of the game. Part of the I, game. Part. I, I talked. I talked to them uh, during it as well. Do you? Yeah. I say. Sh I say stuff like you're not on my level. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is it's it not? Funny, is it not worrying though that if your mouth is open, <laughs> you can get clipped and then maybe I'll just make sure that I'm in a good position. Like, you're not on my level. Boom. 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 And do they talk back to you? <laughs> um, if they can speak English, and I. <laughs> and they say, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> I don't know. Say, "You're right, Sean." <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Don't, don't hurt me. Don't hit me so hard, please. It's just part of it. But yeah. see, after every fight, I, I'll I'll be friends and I'll shake hands. Mm. I don't want anyone to get hurt at the end of the day. But and when I'm in that zone, obviously we're trying to kill each other, we're trying to hurt each other, we're trying to beat each other. You are trying to hurt him, aren't you? Yeah. You're really trying to hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. You're throwing. I want to see them get uh, put in the floor, yeah, and then like, that's it. Like for me, for example, right? Um, if not, I chat a bit of crap sometimes. Like I've chat a bit of smack, uh, which is like obviously just part of my own personality, right? I think it's uh, I always just want to be humble as well. I always what, what I want to remember where I come from. I want to remember who helped me on the way up, right? Because they do say you meet them on the way back down, right? And uh, I don't expect anything from anyone. I don't expect people to like treat me different. If I do something good, I want everyone just right. to treat me the same because right. I'm still Sean Lazzarini from Glasgow. The That's day. And uh, I look at people like Ricky Burns, my coach, just uh, a three-time world champion and doesn't his mental in it. It's just the way he's so humble, the way he just helps anyone. And he's just got that good attitude. Doesn't Because there's other people out there that uh, yeah. have this great... Maybe no one do, not done anything near what he's done, right? And they they have this like such Hype big themselves. ego, and uh, I don't want to be like that, right? I want to have that kind of mentality where I'm still humble, still the same Sean Lazzarini, uh, have my own personality at the end of the day, which is maybe that's essential. I think aye, you need that, but because uh, uh, you want to be too humble, you want to chat a bit of crap sometimes and have a have a laugh and right. maybe be a bit smart, but you you need to remember where you come from and. Uh, Right, that's the kind of attitude I feel like it's good to have. Good. So when you win yeah. at Madison Square Gardens, uh -huh. you're still Sean Lazzarini from Glasgow? Aye, 100%. Still go back to, come back to Glasgow, back to the Western Baths. You, you see yourself living in Glasgow for the rest of your days? You happy here? Or do you think you Aye. need to go somewhere else? I think, see, Glasgow, right? Uh, even though we always uh, complain about the weather, uh, Glasgow's home. But I'll always, I feel like I like to have like some houses like in Italy or yeah. Spain or something, do you know what I mean? But Glasgow will always be home. It feels like home. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love Glasgow. It's a very homey city. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But um, at the same time, as well, I love travelling and maybe one day we'll have a house abroad or whatever, but Glasgow will always be That's on the wish list. The home. Aye. When we've talked about boxing and when you trained me, one of the things you said to me was you, not every punch is hard. You, some of them are really light just to mm -hmm. try and like catch your opponent off guard yeah. or to put them down a different path so it's almost like a game of chess that happens isn't there yeah for and how do you know what your opponent's going to react to do you study them before the fight or uh-huh right? well uh, a wee bit i feel like you don't want to look too much and you so it's good to see a wee bit of your opponent but you don't want to look too much into it and get pure 
at the end of the day, you want to jump in there and do what you're going to do. Yes. You don't want to like think too much about what your opponent's going to do. Right. Because uh, you, you can't predict what they're going to do, really. Yeah, you, you could think your opponent's going to be running on the back foot and then he's changed his tactics, he's coming forward. Right. So you just need to jump in there and adapt. Right. And uh, do what you're going to do, like I said. So that puts you in the, the right mentality just to... And before, my mentality used to be... We spoke about mentality, and it? it's uh, I think mentality is everything. Before, I used to always think like, um, oh, I'm going to go and jump in, do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure he doesn't do this. I don't think anything on it. I just think now, I'm going to jump in there and absolutely kill this guy. Mm. And I don't mean I want to kill him. I understand. I mean, like, I want to just beat do, this do guy. Works. Just yeah. destroy this guy. Yeah. And just... Uh, punch the absolute daylights out of him and uh it's quite win the fight, it's, a, I mean? it's a very violent thing isn't it boxing? Aye, but it's uh it's it's, a, it's called a sweet science at the end of the day so it's a lot of skill a lot of technique making them miss and making them pay hmm. and uh if you see my fights you see that like i use a lot of head movement uh yeah. dodge and come back and counter it's um a sweet science who's the fighter you aspire to the most canelo alvarez but he's also the one you're going to fight and knock out yeah, eventually, yeah. yeah. I'm going to retire them. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, two the two guys that I look up to a wee bit. Uh, I try not, I don't think, you should, I, I feel like you should always have yourself as your own role model. Mm -hmm. And But two guys I feel like I've always looked up to is uh, that Canelo Alvarez and uh, that Kamsat Shemaev for his mentality. The UFC guy. Yeah, yeah. for his mentality. He's, is he a champion yet? No. Cam's, no, he's on the up. But he will be, hopefully. Um, and, but and Canelo Alvarez for just his uh, boxing skill and just the way he fights, I just love it. Do you think that the UFC fighter actually 100% believes that he's going to smash absolutely everybody? Yeah. Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. That's what you need, you need to be like that. Or do you, you don't think it's a bit of a front? You think he'd, he literally wakes up and he's like, yep, everyone's getting smashed. Everybody. Yeah. No doubt. That's what I think as well. Mm. So that's why I believe it as well for him. You walk the walk. I. So after the fight, do you like binge on bad food, see family? Yeah, I, I just see the thing is right. My diet is my diet is the thing in my whole career that I probably could be better in. Yeah, uh, I could be better with more the diet. salad, more vegetables, more fruit, more vegetables. If you need to talk less to, chocolate. If you need, that's talk, what I say more. If you need to talk to someone about that, Sean, talk, talk to me, man. I'll I'll, I'll come. Come I need to inside matters the gut health podcast. <laughs> Let's go. But one hundred percent, I need to. Now, do you think chocolate, like eating too much chocolate is very bad for you? I do think that's very bad for you. What do you think is bad about it? I think sugar is really bad for you. Really? I, I think sugar is, is possibly the worst thing on the planet. Aye. I think you're right as well. I'm being serious. I think, I, it could, I think it's addictive. I genuinely think, I'll be honest with you, addictive. I think I'm addicted to it. I believe it. And I've spoken about it to my coaches and that. I've, I feel like there's not a day that I don't have a bit of chocolate and that's like... You're addicted. Sorry, I feel like I'm addicted. You are. I, it's, I it's, it's, it's your brain and the microbes in your gut saying I need more sugar. Seriously. But I don't need it. You, don't, you definitely don't need it. You know what? If you cut it out and you, this is what I believe. If you cut it out and went to a predominantly plant-based diet, you, your cravings would go. Mm. I've heard this from so many different people. Right. They change their diet totally and they never get sugar cravings anymore. I don't get sugar cravings ever. Swear to God. Or whoever I swear to. Um, I, I do get savoury cravings. Uh -huh. I never get sweet cravings. Honestly, never wake up and go, right, I need a piece of chocolate. So like today, you... when, before I came in here, I got a coffee. And in front of me was like nine different types of cake, peanut butter slice, chocolate this, chocolate that. And I was just like, nah, no. not doing it. Whereas I know that when I used to eat chocolate, like you, I would have it every day. I would have like um, the peanut butter Kit Kat every day, with, which is really good. Kit Kat every day with my with my coffee yeah. or I'd have a, br a brownie or something like that with my coffee. But now it's just, it's just gone, man. See, I need to get rid of that. It's done. Done, completely. It's done, it's finished, mate. If you want to be the best in the world. You're right. If you want to be the best in the whole world, which is what you want to do, right. then your diet is going to be the best in the whole world. It has right. to be, man. But, so what's you've your gotta, diet? Like? You've got to lock it in and dial it down. My diet is just massive amounts of fruit and vegetables, beans, lentils, anything that's got fiber in it, anything that's colorful, anything that's minimally processed. What about meats then? Meat, very rarely. Fish, Yes, lean lean types of very rarely have red meat now. I'm not actually the biggest fan of red meat anymore. Mm -hmm. Chicken don't eat so much of anymore either. Fish still eat a reasonable amount of fish, but my diet is predominantly just plants now. And I can I can send you so many things. I can connect you to so many people who 
like me, were sceptical, who've done the plant-based thing and they just consume fruit and veg, fiber all day and they feel amazing. They feel unbelievable. What about, what about eggs? Eggs good, yeah. I eat eggs all the time. Eggs are good, yeah. And I, I, eggs I, are very I love, nutritious. I love, I love eggs and steak. A steak's good. It tastes good. Uh, I don't have a problem with like eating vegetables and stuff or fruit, but it's like... I feel like I need steak and like stuff like that. Yeah, and one of the other things Beef. that I talked about before in this podcast is like if you if you you should have at least one meal a day that's for your microbes in your gut. And this sounds like a bit like what the hell what is he on about? But there's things that you can digest and there's things that the bugs can digest. So all these fibers that are in like the salad you eat and uh, the vegetables you have your body can't break some of it down but the microbes can and when the microbes break it down they release things that are beneficial to the body so if you, if you a quick fix could be i have one meal a day specifically focused on my microbes and it's just like a huge plate full of really rough like tough things to chew and eat uh, fiber rich things and that that could be one way of getting it all in your system and promoting your gut health but for me like if i if i was a professional athlete I, my diet would be dialed in so yeah. dialed in because my performance would improve and I would feel amazing and I'd look yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So, so just, I, I mean, I think I can't give advice on what's the best diet for an elite athlete. I think you need to find somebody who works with elite athletes because you've got particular energy requirements. Uh -huh. You've got requirements that I don't fully understand, but somebody who sees your training plan, who starts to understand you, sees how your weight fluctuates. You might find it's easier to cut weight. You might find it's easier to gain weight. You might get better sleep, you might recover faster. You know, all these things are on the table when it comes to diet. It's like a fundamental part, like training, sleep, diet. These are like fundamentals, right? Uh -huh. Training's good, sleep's not good, diet's good, could be better. Yeah. Take your pick. Some people say sleep is arguably the most important thing. But for 100%. you, if you don't put the work, then you're not going to get better. Do you no. know what I mean? No, we need to, but... So that's an area in my this life that I can definitely improve on. 100%. 100%. Find someone amazing to just help take things to the next level for you. And they're going to stop you having Aye. sugar in your coffee. Yeah, I know. I need that. Don't <laughs> let me do that next time. We've got it down to half sugar. Yeah, half. That's Aye. good. Yeah. Again, I think once you stop it, you one day you'll be like, why did I do that? See what I'm saying? Any other cravings? Pizza. Uh, so yeah, I, I love like things. I love big like carbohydrate things. Yeah. I love pasta. Yeah. Pasta, pizza, I love like... That's okay. Uh -huh. Do you think so? I think so, yeah, yeah. At particular times, yeah. Uh, but when it's, when it's Is that not like... a staple? Like, what's your home food staples? Like, like what would your mum cook, for example? Uh, she doesn't really cook that much. <laughs> <laughs> she could work on that. <laughs> but uh, but growing up in that, my, I had lots of... I would eat pasta a lot. Yep. Uh, I love steak, innit? I love steak so much. Maybe I, um, steak every day. No, nah, I don't have steak every day, but I have it a good, like maybe three times a week. Maybe. <laughs> it's quite a lot. I love meats. I love the chicken. I just, I love everything. Do you know what I mean? Italian food, Indian food. Oh, Indian's good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but In I know Indian's it's, so good. It's not that good for you, though. I know that's what I think as well. Yeah. I think it's maybe the best. Indian's a weakness of mine, actually. God, you uh -huh. got me thinking about Indian now. Aye. Oh, no. Does that mean I'm going to have a curry tonight? Maybe. <laughs> One thing Glasgow's good for. A curry. It's curry. Where, but what restaurant? I would go to the little curry house on. Oh yeah, I know. The, I know, you know the owner. You know what I'm talking about? Jazz Deep. I don't know the owner. Yeah, because he. he Jazz yeah. Deep, you do good. Uh, Jazz Deep, well done. He he grew up beside me. Really? Aye. Uh, He's doing well. Yeah, his family owned the place. Happy really nice. days. Yeah. Happy days. Where would you go? Uh, Jazz Deep is very. Uh, that place is very nice. The little curry house. Rishi's is very nice. Where's Rishi's? Bath Street. Mm. What nice. about Shoka? Where's that again? I've heard of that. It's uh, near Ashton Lane. Aye. Oh, yeah I've, had, I've, yeah, I've been there as well. It's good, right? Let's stop talking about curries. Yeah, except you get hungry as well. <laughs> Are you training tonight? Yeah. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, I'll be training tonight. See, but, uh, see you at the baths. No, I'm not going to. I went this morning to the I baths. Did, yeah. Sauna but, in the morning sets you up for the day, doesn't it? Yeah, I trained this morning and then I had, I was up at six this morning. So, client. sorry. You're balancing a client with all your training as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm still working just now, full time personal trainer. So, it's uh, it's good. It kind of goes hand in hand as well. That kind of job with right. with training, so it's good. And 
Uh, but I'm going to do some boxing tonight. Probably. Are you training anyone who could be really, really good? Like you identified anyone who could be like an excellent boxer for my clients. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Like I've got like a few clients that are like really good. Uh, a lot of them are doing like kind of um, just like small amateur shows. A lot of them just will have like their first fight and stuff. So, but they're all like quite talented. Um, but it's hard to say like oh. Like at that level, like oh, this, this guy could be like very good. How do you know of someone who's not that <clears throat> could be very good? See, you, you sometimes I feel like you can't because it's uh, if the way they move, the way they hit. Sometimes people are just can hit, just like have natural power. Some people just have natural flow. My mate John Joe, who who I met, is one of, who was one of my clients. Now he's one of my good friends. He he's very talented. He used to be a Thai boxer. Mm. He's just and his hands are just brilliant, mm. and uh, I think he wants to get some professional boxing matches as well. He says, but oh. he, he could he could do very good. Mm. He's very talented. Mm. So you get people just like that. You have that natural talent. That'll be exciting for you seeing your clients win fights. Aye, that'd be the dream as well. Training them, yeah. shouting at them. Hundred percent. Let's go, champ. Yeah. Good. Well, Sean, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's Thank you, brilliant. man. Yeah. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, people want to connect with you where do they get you uh, they can get me on Instagram uh, Sean Lazzarini or Lazzaboy Beast Mode it's called awesome I've had that name forever so don't judge it <laughs> that's what you're all about isn't that's it that's it thanks for coming on man pleasure yeah thanks so much cheers cheers <laughs>